Welcome back to another episode of Millionaire Mentality, where I teach you to grow your financial IQ, build your wealth, and take control of your life. Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. Everywhere we turn on social media and on the television, the consumer is reminded of the flashy cars reserved only for the wealthy to drive. Vehicles like a Porsche 911 or Mercedes G-Wagon. But what if everything we are led to believe about the cars the wealthy drive has been wrong all along? Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and slap the like button like Will Smith at the Academy Awards. This generation's keeping up with the Jones has become keeping up with the Kardashians. You feel inadequate if you're not living in mansions in California or driving around in the $3.8 million car collection Kim Kardashian has, which includes five Maybachs that Kanye West gifted her, valued at $1 million alone. And we convince ourselves that we haven't made it until we have these luxurious things in our life. But if you're willing to challenge this narrative, you'll actually learn that most wealthy people aren't driving these fancy cars after all. In fact, Experian Automotive, which is the auto division of the well-known credit information service Experian, conducted a study of over 600 million vehicles in North America to determine the various brands most commonly purchased by individuals in different income brackets. The highest income bracket in the study was for individuals who earned $250,000 or more each year. The results might surprise you. They concluded that 61% of people in that highest income bracket most commonly purchased Toyotas, Hondas, and Fords. That means the majority of high income earners aren't choosing to drive luxurious vehicles which they can certainly afford. So what gives? Well, for starters, this is the exact reason these individuals are successful and have high net worths in the first place. They aren't worried about keeping up with the Kardashians. They prioritize spending their money on income producing assets like stocks, rental real estate, and bonds, which continue to then make even more money for them. They don't spend more money than is necessary on depreciating assets that will also cost a fortune to acquire and maintain. And the other reason is because they are secure about their net worth and don't feel the need to flash it. Here are some of my favorite examples of this. Jeff Bezos, the founder and former CEO of Amazon, who was worth about $133 billion, happily drove a 1997 Honda Accord. During a prior interview on CBS, the host asked Jeff why he drives a simple car. His response, this is a perfectly good car. Mark Zuckerberg, founder and CEO of Facebook and its parent company Meta, who is worth about $72 billion, gained notoriety for driving a Honda Fit. The Honda Fit is one of the cheapest vehicles in the Honda lineup and the billionaire was known for driving it to the office every day for his daily commute. Sam Bankman Freed, the founder and CEO of FTX, a popular and growing cryptocurrency exchange I personally use, who was worth about $23 billion, drives this Toyota Corolla. When asked why he doesn't go out and buy a Lamborghini, his simple yet effective response, I didn't have a particular need for one. And of course, the list wouldn't be complete without showcasing my Nissan Sentra, which I bought used with 30,000 miles on it and plan to drive it into the ground. It's a metaphor. I paid $13,000 in cash for it in 2020, so I have no monthly payments or interest to pay back. And better yet, the current value of the vehicle now stands at $15,000 since the market for used cars has exploded, officially making it one of the better performing investments I've made in the past couple years since the stock and crypto markets have been panic selling and crashing. So what's the one thing all these people have in common? No, I'm not quite a billionaire, but we all care far more about actually being wealthy than simply looking wealthy. We buy things for value and utility and not for show. And you probably would have no idea we were wealthy if you met us out in the real world. This is what's referred to as stealth wealth which is an awesome superpower to possess. The ability to walk in a room in plain clothes, drive down the street in a car that isn't turning any heads, and live in a modest home. You know you have stealth wealth when you're wealthier than all your neighbors, and not when you are the most broke household on your block because you stretched your budget to buy into a certain neighborhood, which inhibited your ability to save and invest a sizable amount of your income. We also understand that owning and maintaining a vehicle is the second largest killer of wealth, 
next to your primary residence or vacation home. The average annual cost of owning a car based on an assumed 15,000 miles driven each year has recently climbed to just over $9,000. It's much more economical to drive a smaller sedan than a larger pickup truck, primarily due to the acquisition cost of the vehicle, fuel costs, insurance, and maintenance and repairs for things like new tires. And since I've been able to work mostly from home since the start of the pandemic, my wife and I actually made the decision to pare down from having two cars to only one. We now have half the insurance, maintenance and repairs, and registration costs each year, as well as half the headache. I would prefer to have no car and rely solely on walking, biking, and services like Uber and Lyft to get around locally when needed, but we do live in the suburbs and that wouldn't really be feasible. Speaking of biking, we both have been riding bikes more often now that we only have one car, which has been the most economical way to get around town when it's practical to do so and has also been an enjoyable experience for us. Not to mention, it's a great way to get in some exercise each week and shed some unwanted pounds. If you find yourself struggling to increase your savings rate and invest any meaningful amount of money each month, Try starting with the choices you're making for transportation and challenge whether you can make some intentional changes in that department without materially sacrificing your happiness in the process. After all, pursuing financial freedom is not about depriving yourself of joy. It's actually the exact opposite. It's freeing yourself from all the shackles in your life that are not making you happy to make room for all the things that do. Making intentional changes in your life and changing your attitude towards money and spending habits will move the needle in a positive direction for you. Psychology drives behavior. Behavior drives decisions. Decisions drive your future. In the words of Dave Ramsey, who I have a love-hate relationship with, live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. That's gonna do it for today's video, guys. If you want to know all the secrets to how I went from being broke to a millionaire in just four years and the exact action plan I followed, I'm offering you a free copy of my short ebook, Financial Health, the six simple steps to stop fearing money, grow your wealth, reduce your stress, and take control of your life. All you need to do is subscribe to my channel, like and comment on this video to let me know, and then send me an email in my contact info in the description, and I'll reply back to your email with your free copy with no strings attached. Stay hungry, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.